Greetings and welcome to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexter Pelser, Amen. and our special guest, Sister Mary Gay, Dr. Mary Gay, back to our spiritual mommy. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I'm excited because today's program is powerful. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's called a revelation of the revelator. And who's the revelator? The Holy Spirit. You know, the word of God says that the Lord doesn't do anything without first telling his prophets. And this morning when we were walking the dogs, Dexter was telling me, and he was telling me that the Holy Spirit will reveal things to his prophets, that he revealed a lot of things to Daniel. And that Daniel said, Lord, I don't understand this. I don't get the interpretation, but the Lord tell him, write it down and seal it. Yep. And, and, and then the Lord was so wonderful. He sent the angel, Gabriel, yeah. to interpret the revelation. Because mm -hmm. the source of every revelation is the Holy Spirit. And when he reveals things to us, they're truth. And those things are to bless us, to guide us to teach us, to discipline us, to make us overcomers so we can finish the race and go to heaven and receive the crown of eternal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, with no further ado, I'm going to ask one of these two anointed people to pray for the program. Mary, would you pray? Father, we just thank you in Jesus Christ's name to be able to come to this beautiful nation. Yes and to speak the things the Holy Spirit has given to us for you and also for ourselves, and to help others. And just bless us. Let every word that come out of us amen. be a benefit and a help to those watching. Amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So um, the Lord's been really speaking to us to speak about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to be talking about it in different ways at different times. And we'll be here again next week with Mary Kay and giving more revelations. But... For today, we're really talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a revelator to bring all the truth into our lives from God, from the very throne room of God, and actually how that happens, and then how God uses beautiful people like Mary, who is a revelator, has that, that calling of dreams, visions, and revelations, to then bring that truth also into the body, and how God does this. I think it's really important that we understand it so that we can walk within everything the Holy Spirit has for us. And we can understand that these revelations are meant for us today. We're meant to have these. So I want to just jump into the scriptures, which is really, let's just start with the Old Testament. What does it say about revelation? <clears throat> and it starts out by saying in, Rev in Numbers 12:6. Hear now my words. This is God speaking. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. So, and then he goes on to talk about Moses, how he talks to Moses face to face because he's his friend, which is really interesting prophetically in the New Testament because we're friends of Jesus, friends of God. So, now we hear that the Lord speaks through his prophets and visions and, and he speaks to the prophets and so they'll both see what the Lord is showing them and they'll hear what the Lord is showing them and then they will share that with the people of God. So this is a very important ministry of God that the people hear God's commands for their life. And in the Old Testament, the way they would hear that most clearly besides reading the word, which was a lamp unto their feet, the Torah, and the word, the Psalms and the prophets. Besides that was to hear from the prophets to correct them and steer their course in the right direction when they got off the, the perfect will of God. So God uses the, the actual visions and the voice of the prophets very clearly to guide our way, to be also a lamp unto our feet. Now, let's turn to um, Acts 2, 17. Now, this is, of course, the prophecy in uh, Joel 2.28. But we're going to actually read this prophecy in Acts chapter 2. 
verse 17. <coughs> this is the day of Pentecost. So the Holy Spirit has fallen on the apostles. And, and there were over 100 of them. And he fell on, those, on the apostles, the disciples, the followers. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the, and the women were all there. Everyone got filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, on the day of Pentecost, had tongues of fire on their head, and they were speaking in the tongues of all the nations and praising God. And so the people thought they were actually drunk, and they commented on it. And so Peter, you know, here's their words that they say, the people are saying, I think they're drunk in verse 15. And then in Acts 2.16, Peter, of course, <laughs> bold Peter, stands up and speaks. He says, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, so male and female, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. God fulfilled that promise at the beginning of the church age on the day of Pentecost when he poured out his spirit on all flesh. And by the way, remember, 3,000 then came to believe after Peter's sermon, and they got baptized and received the Holy Spirit. So we have the birth of the church, and the acts of the ministry of the Holy Spirit have begun in this book. That's why it's actually called the book of Acts. It's really about the acts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is really what this book is lifting up, written by Luke, who also, of course, wrote the Gospel of Luke. And he's a doctor, so he eyewitness, and you know doctors, they're very specific about what they see, and they're very precise in how they describe it. That's why I love when Luke, Luke's writings, because he's very specific and, and precise in his descriptions as to what's happening. And I like that because it helps my analytical mind understand. Now, so we know that today, this is a continuation under the church age of God pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And it is also the time where prophecies and visions and dreams will be poured out on his maid servants and his men servants. So we know that. Now, why does this matter? Well, let's, let's step back for a second and look at who is the real ministry of revelation, dreams, and visions. Who do these come through? And it is actually through the gift of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which we each receive in our salvation. And some of us, like myself, didn't even know who the Holy Spirit was. And I received him when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit later. Just to be clear. And there is evidence of that in the book of Acts of people who... Have, we're following Jesus Christ as disciples and believers, but had not yet received it's the true. baptism it's of the right. Holy Spirit. In fact, Peter confronts them at one point, and so does Paul, I believe. And then they re he laid his hands on them, and they all received the gift and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then they started speaking in tongues, and sometimes they would prophesy, but the gifts would be activated in them, and the Holy Spirit ministry would be activated in them. We cannot live without the Holy Spirit. I tried for years and years. And I fell on my face as a prodigal son. I fell away from the Lord. I sinned horribly against the Lord, what seems like forever in my life, until God in his mercy raised up a woman, Juanita Mullins, I love you, my spiritual mom, one of my spiritual moms. And she started praying for me a, a year before I actually fully came back to the Lord. The Lord called her out and said, you pray for that young man. You know why? Because my poppy was praying for me, who always took me to church. This is how the kingdom works. I am so thankful when people pray for each other. It is why I am so thankful. I actually have a mantle of, of intercession, of prayer, received from that same spiritual mo mother, Juanita Mullins. I, it, what an amazing gift. And because of that, I get to now continue her beautiful ministry, which she flowed into me. I am so thankful for her, Lord. And flow that into others by praying for them. Prayer is such an amazing gift, and it changes the world. It changes people from going to hell to going to heaven, like it did me. I am so thankful for that ministry of prayer. And by the way, that is a ministry which activates the working of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. 
Because remember, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And right after that scripture in Ephesians 6, it then talks about how we're to pray in active warfare for all our brothers and sisters all the time. Now we understand the kingdom of God. Hopefully that testimony helps you a little bit. John 16. So I love talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. That gift that I received is so precious to me. I guard it. I know now that I am a holy temple of the Holy Spirit. And boy, I'm telling you, I want to do everything possible to please the Holy Spirit so that any time he wants, he will flow through me and bless people. This is so important to me. So Acts, John 16, 12. Let's read about this beautiful revelation the Holy Spirit gives us. John 16, 12. <clears throat> I love this. So, of course, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He's talking about the Holy Spirit because he's about to die, go to the cross and die. And then after that, we know is after 40 days when he ministered to the disciples and he went, ascended up into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, continuing to intercede for us, but now is in heaven with the Father. But then he said, I will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. I will not leave you as orphans. So now we have that beautiful gift of the Holy Spirit, Christ in me, which is through the Spirit of Christ who is in me and filling me. Now listen to this. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, so he's speaking in the future tense because Pentecost has not come yet. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you even of things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. This is why I love the Trinity. Listen to this. All things that the Father has are mine, Jesus says. So we have the Father. Everything the Father knows in all his plans are also Jesus's. Okay? And then what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit then goes to Jesus, gets the plans of God, the revelations, whatever it is, the truth, brings it back, and brings it into us. That's what it says. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine from Jesus and declare it to you. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This is revelation of the very plans of heaven for your life, being brought to you by the precious Holy Spirit. And he says, all, again, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Now, Mama, he teaches us all things. That's repeated in John 14, 26. And he guides us into all truth. So who ultimately brings the truth of God, because he can never lie, he can only speak truth and only in love, who brings that to us? in our everyday life? Uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. So, yeah. can I understand the Word of God? Someone help me. Can I understand the Word of God without the Holy Spirit functioning inside of me? No. Because the Holy Spirit is what makes that word rhema, is what makes it come alive. When we're preaching and, and we're looking at the word, all of a sudden you get all this stuff and you start talking, 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 and you start saying all these things you never thought of. It's because the Holy Spirit is telling you. He's teaching you. Amen? Amen. Amen. In fact, the word says that spiritual truths, being the word of God, can only be discerned by the spirit. It says in the flesh you cannot... You can read this word, and you can intellectually understand it, and maybe even have a moral rule you'll try to follow, but you will not have the truth abiding in you. And I mean the supernatural truth that actually gets written on your heart, as the word of God says. This truth will set you free. That's why Jesus said, if you abide in the truth, it will set you free. you you, you got to get this. So the Holy Spirit brings the truth and makes it rhema or active or living inside of me so that I can start out, as and we've had visions of this, as a caterpillar, 
an ugly little caterpillar crawling around on the God on the ground, but God can transform me into a butterfly useful for the kingdom of God to serve him all the days of my life. But it is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit that I see the need to repent, I see the need to change. Yeah. It is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit that I can discern the truth so when the devil is telling me lies to try to destroy me, I can reject and resist those lies and I can receive the truth instead and stay in God's perfect will. The ministry of the Holy Spirit of guiding us into all truth is important for every moment of our life. Amen. And let's just talk about the word for a second. Marisol and Mama, how many times do you read the word in the same passage you've read in the past and you get a deeper layer of revelation? Many times. Um, can I say something, yeah. Dexter? When, when uh, God called me, it was through a pro prophets and apostles in my church and said God had a great uh, call on my life. And I had a mentor from A. Allen's time that would confirm the things. And, and I uh, was seeking, I didn't have the baptism then of the Holy Spirit. And then we went to Demas Shikarian's meeting downtown Detroit and he prayed for me and I got the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then it was, I was always had a hunger, but when God himself called me, I had a vision in my hall. And I was thinking that when you were talking about the dreams and visions and revelation. And he said, I've called you to bring people out of darkness into light with dreams, visions, and revelations. And he showed me two mountains, Dexter. And the two mountains, hmm. one was white and one was black. And, and at the bottom of the mountain was a little river. And on the black side of the mountain was all people dressed with black hoods. But they would come over the river to the white side and they would put their hands up and be transformed. Wow. And at the top of the mountain was the sun coming up. And the Lord said to me again three times, you've been called to bring him out of the darkness into the light. Hallelujah. And clearly, he, he, in fact, he drew the whole thing in my hall, the whole picture, the whole, it was a whole portrait of wow. what my call was. And he spoke to me and he, and he told me that. And then it was confirmed again by prophets and so that was the beginning of my ministry many, many years ago. And I think it was in, uh, after I'd got the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise yeah, God. about two or three weeks after that. So that's a beautiful shift, Mama, to the fact that you are a revelator, like John was. Mm -hmm. And I know this is an unusual calling, but we also see that um, when God pours out a spirit upon us, we can have visions, dreams, and revelation ourselves. And plus, we can prophesy. But it's according to what he says. Right, right. The gifts in Corinthians. Right, and that's according to the gifts yeah. in Corinthians, exactly. So this is why this teaching is really not just meant for someone who's called as a revelator. Right. But it's to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit and how we really need the Holy Spirit to show us and lead us, lead us into all truth and how we can actively participate in that by reading our word and by asking the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth. And let's just do that for a moment. Father, as I read the word of God, I do not want it to just be logos, the written word. I ask for it to be rhema, active and living, Amen. a living and active word and powerful, sharper than a yes. two-edged sword, able to pierce the yes. division of my soul and spirit, even able to judge the thoughts and intentions of my heart. I ask you, Holy Amen, Spirit, Dexter. as my teacher, to always teach me the truth and guide me and lead me into all truth. And as I need to repent, I surrender for you to lead me, convict me, and bring me to godly repentance, Lord, every time you need me to change to become more like Jesus Christ. You know what? I just surrender completely to not only be filled by your Holy Spirit, Lord, but for the ministry of the Holy Spirit to lead me into all truth all the days of my life. I desire this. I declare and decree thy word is a treasure. And it is a lamp unto my feet. And I choose this precious treasure to be understood by the ministry of the Holy Spirit and to transform me from a caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly that is pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, you know go uh, ahead, Marisol. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And, and he will reveal things to us through dreams, visions, and revelations. And, and 
And when he does, we have to take a step of faith. And I want to give him a testimony. Amen. I had a dream, and in my dream, there was like, it was going to be an attack. Somebody was going to be hurt. So I woke up, and, and I told Dexter and Mary, okay, and look, it wasn't just about me. It was what the Spirit was doing. The corporate anointing of, um, so they got concerned. So Sister Mary said, well, let's pray to the Lord so he will show us where this attack is going to be. And we're going to pray against it. Because when God shows us things, it's for us to pray, to come in agreement, to pray against it for blessing, for restoration, for protection, for many different reasons. So we got the map of the United States, and the Lord told, he gave me the dream, and the Lord gave Sister Mary the, the city, Dallas, Texas. Remember, guys? Yep. And then we all touched and agree in unity together like they were on the day of Pentecost for that attack to be discovered. In that year, there was an attack in Texas that was discovered. So this is so important that we know and walk in the Holy Spirit because he will speak to us to protect us, to guide us, to restore us, to teach us, to discipline us. Amen. It is so important for us to have an intimate walk and to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. One of my favorite stories of that, about that, Marisol, is um, Elijah uh -huh. um, with his servant Gehazi. Uh -huh. And the word says in Kings, it's really beautiful. It says that um, the Lord showed Elijah every plan of the enemy's king, the Syrian king, so that the Syrians even actually said to their king that the, serve, the prophet Elijah knows even what you say and plan in your bedroom. And therefore, as the enemy was coming against Israel, the Syrians, to ambush the king and ambush the people, Elisha, every time the Lord gave him where the Syrians would be for their ambush, told the king of Israel, and every time they were thwarted. <laughs> What's amazing about this revelation is that in this same scripture, <laughs> The king hears that it's Elijah. So he sends, like, I don't know how much of his army, half or more, and they surround just Elijah and his servant, Gehazi. The entire Syrian army surrounds him. You're going to love this. And Elijah comes out of his tent because his servant says, oh my, like he's, he's fearful. He says, we're surrounded by the enemy. Oh no, what are we going to do? And Elijah prays something. He says, Lord, Open up the eyes of my servant so that he may see. Gehazi's eyes were opened up and he saw the armies of God, which were much greater, fiery char chariots and all, surrounding them so that the enemy would never touch them. So when Marisol says we need to hear from the Lord, part of the reason is God uses amazing um, visions, dreams, even prophecies to protect us from the plans of the enemy. And that's really important so that we're always close to the Lord and listening. And then when we get prophecies, we get visions, we get dreams, we don't just discard them and say, oh, that's nice. We pursue them with the Lord through prayer until we get the interpretation of what it means and then what action we're to take. Marisol and I, when she wakes up with dreams, that's exactly what we do. We stop. When Mary comes out and says, I had a dream or a vision, we stop and we pray and we seek the Lord. What are you showing us, Lord? What does this mean? And what are we to do about it? And most, almost every time we end up praying. In fact, I can't remember a time we haven't prayed. And when we have meetings sometimes, the Lord will speak to Sister Mary. And he will tell her the healings that he's going to do before you get there. Yes. So, Mary, can you tell him how he does that? In a moment. Okay. It is amazing because then i seen how <coughs> the Lord will give us words, and she'll say, there's somebody here with a brain tumor or somebody here <coughs> that needs this or that. 
And they'll come forth and the Holy Spirit will just <gasps> touch them and <coughs> minister to them. And they know that they know that they know that is God meeting them at their need. Amen, Dexter? Amen, amen. So um, I want to build a little foundation here, and then we'll go back to you, Mary, um, of the scriptures. Revelation 119. And I want to talk about how the revelations are actually also given to us for the sake of the body. They, they don't just come directly from the Holy Spirit to each one of us. They actually, actually will come through us to the body in our roles, whether it's an <laughs> apostle, a prophet, a revelator. Listen to this. The Lord says to John, write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. So John was a revelator. So now you can see he's to write all the things that he sees from the past, the present, and the future. So right now you see that part of the role of a revelator or as a prophet may be to go backwards to something that's happened in someone's life that wounded them, that the yoke needs to be removed. It can be in a present or it can be something to come. Because remember, the Holy Spirit will even tell us from the Lord, from the throne of God, things to come. And, but he will also do that through his children, us. Next, Amos 3.7. The Lord doesn't do anything without first revealing it to his prophets. Well, well, there you go. So God actually has us participate in what his plans are for this earth but he will first reveal it through his prophets. They're like the forerunners. They're like the, the prong of the battle. They're going forth first. So now we know that aspect of it. Now, and this is one, Mary, so I know that you'll love, Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Oh, I love that one. Tell me what Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, Marisol. Even though, the, even though the vision tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. Amen. And I then love it. When it does come, he says, write it down, down that those who hear it afterwards may take it and run with it. it. Ah, and what's amazing about that is it says, uh, you're going to love this, Habakkuk stood on the wall, looked up to the Lord, and waited for his answer because he asked him a question. Do you hear that? He didn't just pray and say, whatever. He actually actively looked up and waited for the Lord to answer him. And then the Lord spoke to him. He asked four questions, I believe, in Habakkuk, and the Lord answered them all four times. you got to get this. To activate the Holy Spirit, he's a dove, you, you need to go, t you need to activate him. Uh, if there's something to be said here, it's that we are to be active participants in the kingdom of God and in the ministry of the Holy Spirit and even activating him and making him welcome and desiring him to hear from the Lord. Because the Lord says, my sheep hear my voice and they will follow me. So we're to hear from the Holy Spirit. As he goes up to, takes from Jesus, what he has for us, we're to stop and listen and actively do that as Habakkuk did. When, yes. um, when we're praying, I've learned some, some, you know, as a young person, I'm kind of like hyperactive and kind of impulsive. So Dexter and Mary is like, cool. <laughs> let's Whoa, see horsey. what the Lord is saying. <laughs> they hold me down. Don't you guys? They say, honey, let's hear what the Lord is saying. Let's stop here. Because they sense God, God wants to speak. Both him and her have done that to me. And they taught me that we got to wait on him for him to speak to us. Because sometimes I just want to move on too quickly. Amen. And we need to tarry and, and listen. What is the spirit is saying? Amen. Amen. Are you ready, Mama? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was my question? <laughs> <laughs> How's a revelator? Yes. Um, how do you hear from God? Well, how, how do you hear from him, amen? Well, I know the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit work as a team mm -hmm. with us. And when God called me, like I told you, explain my call to me. And then when uh, Jesus Christ appeared to me in a human form, I was told by prophets and apostles that would happen. So I believed him. And he revealed to me uh, the depths of hell. He took me on a journey three hours a night for 30 nights. And I was in the spirit and Jesus was in the human form into the middle of the earth and showed me the abode of the dead. He showed me hell. 
and told me to write a book and make a record of it. Very clear, like Habakkuk, make a vision plain so that people can run with a vision. And Dexter, it was not a beautiful revelation, horrible revelation. That's right. But it was revealed the truth to save people right. from eternal damnation. And that's why we're on here to share with you the truth that you must be born again. That's right. Have Christ in your heart, honey, and repent of your sins and God will forgive you. And he showed me hell not just for me, my family, but for the whole world. Uh, I've been, Dexter, to 128 nations telling the revelation of hell about what Christ showed me. And thank God thousands and thousands have come to God, Dexter. Uh, right a few years ago in South Korea, uh, 6,000 got saved. And, and one day from doing a play of my Hallelujah. truth of hell. Because nobody wants to go there, Mars, no. after they understand about hell, where the fires, the uh, snakes, there's worms, there's demons, there's sewers, decks, everything in hell. Horrible. And people never die there. They continuously burn. You paid a price, haven't you? Yes. A big Amen. price. And Marisol, I want to go back to something you said, right? What? So... Marisol is incredibly bold, which serves the Lord amazingly and beautifully. I've seen it over and over again. I've seen revivals in McDonald's more than once, in Office Depot, in the grocery store, in Macy's, you name it, because she's bold and she just starts going up to people and proclaiming the gospel. And people are just, because of the, the light she carries, start telling her their, their problems and then she calls me over and we pray for them. She, it, it's just beautiful. But there are times for Marisol and myself where we get ahead of the Lord. Okay? I'm just going to be honest. We just see something, we quickly respond. And uh, I want to just let you know that God has amazing mercy and grace. Amen. That Amen. even if we make a mistake, He covers it with His grace. Amen. And I'm here to tell you He does that over and over again. But I want you to hear it actually in the scriptures so you understand how God operates. Because here's the thing. And the Spirit just fell me. Do not be afraid to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. You are to be bold. Amen. You read Acts chapter 4 and you will understand you are to be bold as a lion. And you will go out and you will make mistakes and you won't see everyone healed you pray for. But nevertheless, you go boldly forth and obey the Lord. And then the Word says, if you persevere, you will see the harvest. You will see the fruit of the harvest. Amen. But only if you persevere. Don't stop. Keep going in this. And listen to what happened. I love this story. 2 Samuel 7, chapter 4. David, 7, 4? Yeah. David finally has peace in his kingdom. King David. He's finally made king and he has peace. Wow, for 40 years. It's just glorious, right? And he says, um, he asked Nathan if he can build a temple for God to reside in, because God has not had a temple. And he knows the history that God had a tabernacle in the wilderness with Moses, but he has not had a temple. Now that they are in Israel, they're in the promised land, he does not have a temple. David knows that. So he says, he asks Nathan that, can I build a temple? And here's how Nathan responds to him in verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 4. I'm sorry, verse 3. Nathan said to the king, go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Okay, so I believe Nathan just responded from his heart. Listen, you're, you're the beloved of the Lord. He chose you. You're his king. He anointed you. Go do whatever's in your heart. And that sounds like good wisdom to me, but it was not a prophetic word from the Lord. It sounded good, but it was not a word from the Lord. So listen to what the Lord does. Verse 5, <clears throat> verse 4. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. And then he goes on and speaks much more into him from the Lord. Did you see what happened? I believe Nathan spoke from his heart in love to his king, but not in the office of prophet. And he told him, go do what is ever in your heart. And the Lord said, no. 
Because if you read the rest of this word from the Lord, David would not build a temple for the Lord because his arm was bloodied by too much warfare. And the Lord told him that. But he said, but, since you're my faithful servant, through your son Solomon, the temple will be built. So, it's, and, and not only that, it's a beautiful, incredible word because he's told that the throne of God would forever be on the seat of David. <coughs> I mean, you're talking about a king who was blessed above and beyond any other king so that Jesus sits in the city of David on the throne of David forever. Now, this tells me something really important. If I rush forward in my eagerness to serve the Lord and say something from my heart, and I always ask the Lord, which I want to do right now, Father, if I ever speak a word that is not from you into anyone's life, I ask you to quickly correct me and give me a true word so I can speak that into their lives. I ask you to, in your grace and mercy, cover my sin of speaking into something, life something that was not from you in my office in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask you to do this all the days of my life. In fact, Lord, I want to pray Psalm 141.3, just so I make this official, Lord. Set a guard. This is the psalm. O oh Lord, over my mouth, keep watch over the door of my lips. And I ask you to do that all the days of my life, Lord. Set a guard over my mouth so that I only speak thy Amen. truth into people's Amen. lives in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, through the anointing, yes. through your power, because I know this, because the word says you can even bind my tongue. That if you need to, bind my tongue until you are ready to loose the truth through me in the name of Jesus Christ. Because, Father, I just tell you, I desire never to speak a false word into someone's life. Give them a false hope or a false word or tickle their ears. I reject that all the days of my life. And I ask you to guard and keep me in the truth, spirit of truth, all the days of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, that's a, yeah, go ahead, Marisol. And, you know, revelations, when God speaks, is for the benefit of all. And he speaks to love, to restore, to guide. Um, like when the Lord gave the revelation of hell to Sister Mary, he said that people know that that place is real. So that people know that if they don't accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they'll go there. All the revelations that are from God always point to Jesus, are always confirmed in the Bible. When Sister Mary teaches about hell, she teaches it from the scriptures, from Ezekiel 32, Galatians 21, Revelation 21, um, Luke is always Luke 16, Luke it's 16 Galatians 22, but that's okay. It's always <laughs> confirmed with the word. Galatians 5.20. It's always confirmed with the word. And I am so amazed because I'm like, wow. Amen. And like when he gives me dreams, like he gave me a dream about my, my father-in-law, and I, he told me something in the dream, and today I was reading what he told me was in Hebrews 10 and Hebrews 9. He will always confirm it. True revelators always aligned with the word of with God. With the word of God. Wow, there's a mouth there. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's amazing. And, and I've learned from both Dexter and Mary. Everything they say, it's kind of cute because Dexter loves the word. So when we always say, Dexter, do you have a verse for that? <laughs> and... It is so amazing how everything is confirmed with the words. The word is so important. You got to test every revelation. And if it doesn't align with these, put it in the shelf. Amen. And you said something that I want to go back to, to you, Marion, which is when Jesus brought you into hell and was showing you things, there were times when you didn't really understand what was going on, right? That's right. But mm -hmm. what did Jesus do? The same as the Holy Spirit did. 
Did he not explain to you what was mm -hmm. happening? Yes. Did yes, he would. He would say uh, to me, peace be still, and he would explain to me. It's like, look, learn, and listen mm -hmm. what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And he would always give me understanding, some things he didn't know. He said it wasn't from my timing to understand some of the things. Same as he did with Daniel. Yes. Right, right. And he told him to seal the book. It will be for a later time. Yes. Yeah. And he even did that to you, which is why yes. your last book, A Divine Revelation of the Deceptions of Satan, was released because he closed up yes. your memory of those things. Yes. Supernaturally and then released them. A couple well, of years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And, and remember, mm -hmm. you first went to hell 40 years ago in 1976. It's not quite 41 years yet. 40, 40 yeah. years ago. Yeah. In 1976. So yeah. God has a time and a season for everything the Word says. Mm -hmm. Even for releasing yeah. parts of the truth were reserved for the two years ago for that book. And that's why I love the Lord, because everything's in the right time when we follow him. And, and I want to just confirm what the Lord did with Mary and what he did with Daniel, because he sent Gabriel to give him um, revelation of what was spoken understanding to Daniel. Let me read this in, in Jeremiah, because I love this, because the Lord has done the same thing for me even in my office, which I am so thankful for. The Lord's speaking to Jeremiah, and just in case you know, Jeremiah was rather young, so he doesn't think he's equipped to be the prophet of the Lord here. And so in verse 7, the Lord says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah you, what? 1-7, mm -hmm. do you not say I am a youth? This is God himself, the Lord speaking to Jeremiah. Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Even if they don't receive the word, don't be afraid. This is really important as a prophet. So first of all, he tells them, you will speak my word to the people of Israel. Okay, now let's listen. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said, Behold... So we understand what's supernaturally happening. I have put my words in your mouth. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Through the gift of prophecy, one of the nine gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You know, I have put my words into your mouth. Yes. And the Lord is not a respecter of persons. He calls a young man, and he called Mary, and she was a housewife. Yes. Mm -hmm. She was a housewife. <clears throat> and very young then, too. Very yeah, young. and and he kept you know, when, when she preaches, she kept saying that um, she would sit in the back and all the prophets would call her and prophesy this over her. Mm -hmm. And she would <laughs> fall out in the spirit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Remember? Yeah. You would, she, oh, yeah, and had my baby on my hip. Holding my <laughs> Can you picture that? Oh, wow. yeah, it happened. Wow. And, you know, she was a housewife. The Lord has given her 12 books. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Twelve books, my right, mama? Yeah, I know. Wow. You know, when God has a calling for you, man, if you are obedient, <coughs> he will use you to bless the socks off the people. Amen. 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 So Jeremiah one ten. We just saw the Lord is releasing words through Jeremiah as a prophet, okay? He says, I have put my words in my mouth. See, I have set this day you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? Ah, here we go. Remember? The Lord said, my prophets will speak my word and see visions. Listen to this. He's teaching Jeremiah. This is what I love the Lord. <laughs> Here's our teacher. Listen. He says, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, <clears throat> you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Then again, the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. And the Lord gave him the interpretation of that. Do you see what's happening here? Do not be afraid when you're called by the Lord that you need to learn. In fact, that should be 
like foremost is I need to know the ways of the Lord. I need to know the word of the God, and I desperately need you, Holy Spirit, to lead me into all truth and activate even the gifts in me and teach me how to use the gifts. Now, if the Holy Spirit leads you in all truth, is he not going to lead you into how to use the gifts that come from him? Is he not? Of Amen. course he is. He is your helper. That's why one of his names is Paraclete, helper. So when we understand this beautiful ministry of the Holy Spirit, we're going to have less fear to walk in our calling because we're going to know that if we're led by the Holy Spirit and we walk in step with him, he will activate all of this ministry, hearing the word, having visions, getting the interpretations will all come from the Lord <clears throat> through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, this means that we can all receive revelations, we can all receive visions, we can all receive dreams, and we can all prophesy. This is what the Word says. That's why Joel 2.28 says the Lord will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. So now if we know that, and we know the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the question is now do we want to walk in this, right? Do we want to walk in this? Do we want to allow the Holy Spirit? So um, I want to pray to activate this. Father, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. What a precious, precious you, gift you are, thank Holy you, Spirit. I just love you, Father. I love you, Jesus, and I love you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, to always fill me in accordance with Luke 11 mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit, because I cannot follow you and serve you in the power of the resurrection without the Holy Spirit. I confess that to you, Lord. I cannot. I cannot Thank do Jesus. anything. Thank in fact, without Jesus. faith, then the measure Thank of faith that comes from you, I can't <clears throat> even please you any time in my Thank life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I confess this to you. So now I confess oh, that I desperately you, need you, Holy Thank Spirit. You, and I choose to be a holy temple, mm -hmm. sanctified and set apart for you, Lord God, all the days of my life. In fact, I set myself apart for you. As for me and my household, we will only serve you, Lord, all the days of our life. I reject and break covenant with anything else in my family line, and I repent of it in the name of Jesus Christ. She wash us, our family line, clean by the blood of the Lamb, and now bring us forth through the precious ministry of you, Holy Spirit, into our calling, because we choose to walk in our, your perfect will, Thank Lord, you, and Jesus. follow you all the days of our life, precious Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If I've messed up in the past, which yes. I know I have, forgive me. Precious Lord, forgive yes, me. Have mercy Jesus. on me. You, and now lead me back yeah, into thy calling and thy perfect thank will, you, Holy Spirit. I surrender oh, to you completely and radically on behalf of myself and my family oh, line. Oh, In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What thank a blessing. Jesus. Thank you, Dexter. And thank oh, you, Mama. Can, can Mama just pray to release yes. the visions and revelations over people and anointing? Um, Dexter, I have a... Yeah. a a, a difference of opinion on okay. that. Uh -huh. um, what I've learned in about the book of Corinthians, it's according to what gift God calls you with is the one that you prosper the most in, what gift he's called you to do. Uh -huh. Okay, that, that's the way I look at it. You uh -huh. gotta, everybody's got different views. But uh, what God, when he called me and chose me to have dreams, visions, and revelations, that's mostly what I have, mm -hmm. those kind of gifts. Right. But I don't believe God gives the gifts to everyone because of the way they live. If their lives are full of sin, they have to repent before they can get these gifts, is what I mean to say. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Marisol, would you like to pray? Yeah. Yeah, okay. we, well, we yeah. have to clear that up because a lot of people watching may think, they can go out and get these gifts, but honey, you have to live a holy life. You have to repent of your sins to be able to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right? Amen. That's what I wanted to say. Amen. Because there may be people watching children that don't understand. My name just turned us on uh, about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, and, and I will say, though, that since the Lord pours out His Spirit on all flesh and gives us dreams, visions, and revelation, I will tell you, that it is a precious gift yes. for you to seek. Yes. But repentance comes first in giving your life to yes. the Lord. But <clears throat> we cannot, I'm telling you, the dreams, visions, and revelations that we get and the prophecies that we get are precious to us. 
because That's they right. keep us in God's perfect will. Amen. And Amen. you are meant to also carry those gifts as is pleasing to the Holy Spirit as he pours that ministry through who he chooses. Because remember, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, he's the captain of the ship. He chooses who each gift is administered through. Amen. But <clears throat> we want to be vessels always available for the Holy Spirit to pour his gifts through. Amen. Because whatever gift is needed in that moment, we could be the one he uses for that. Amen. And that's really important that we understand it because that is scripturally what the word of God teaches us. You know, you have to pay a price of holiness and righteousness. And if you pay that price, the Lord can give you all these things, amen, because they're precious. And, and he's going to give them, amen, as you seek him and you know him and you follow him in the power of the resurrection. Amen. And Romans 8, 14 says that he teaches us and he disciplines those who he loves, right, Dexter? That's right. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the program. We ask you, Lord, to, to bless the people so that they might know you in the power of the resurrection and serve you in holiness and in the power of your Holy amen. Spirit Hallelujah. to bless people in the name of Jesus. Amen. This has been your amen. program. Shalom, shalom. With your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, Dexter Pelser, Reverend Dexter, and Dr. Barry K. Baxter. Amen. 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 Be blessed. Amen. Shalom.